Hello, this is Anthony with Copley. Today we'll be demoing the Trio Flex 6 Nano Integrated EtherCAT Controller with the Copley Control Servo Drive. Um, this is a real-time EtherCAT main device. It can close the loop up to 125 microseconds. It has a variety of different flavors depending on how many axes you need to control. We'll be demoing the P600, which is a two-axis controller. So here's what it looks like. Uh, it'll be commanding motion to the Copley XEC servo drive, and the Copley will be uh, controlling the MXL servo motor. So this is a, another, this is a motor from uh, Trio, the Trio cells. has a 23-bit absolute encoder on it. Um, and uh, yeah, so the first thing you want to do is uh, hook up the motor to the drive, and then uh, you know, config, put, put in all the motor data, tune it, configure it, make sure it's working. You're able to jog here. And um, so here in the control panel, I've done that and um, gone through all the setup. And um, or I see that I'm in can open over EtherCAT mode, COE mode, so that's good. I'm, I'm ready for, for the commands from the main device. Um, and I have no faults. Um, and then also I can see here I have 4.36 uh, firmware. So that's the firmware that we ship from production. So the next step would be now, so I, I'm connected over serial by the way to uh, the drive. So the next step is to go to copy controls, go to support, general resources. Under software, you'll find all the ESI files here. Uh, you, can, you can generate any of them using the ESI file generator tool. Uh, you'd enter in your model and then the uh, firmware version that you have, and it would uh, give you the correct ESI file. So make sure you download the slots version of the ESI file. Um, so here's the uh, the Motion Perfect software. This is uh, what you we use to actually configure the the main device uh, from Trio. So uh, the first thing we do is go to File Program and you're going to import the object dictionary. So this is where you'd import the ESI file. So you click import from file and then you select the, the ESI file. Again, this is the slots version because we're going to be using the those uh, cyclic synchronous uh, modules and those are inside of the slots. You know, modules, slots, they're kind of, uh, they're, they're talking about the same thing, so. You do that, and then you walk through this. I already imported it, so I won't do that again. Um, and then when you expand the network here, it does a scan. It finds the drive and the, uh, uh, the it finds the the main device and the the um, sub device, so the drive and the controller. So what we'll do is click on the drive, and then we'll click import ESI file, and this is where we're actually going to use that. We're going to use that ESI file that we just imported and use it to auto configure uh, the drive. So we'll be in a position mode. Um, we have one axis. Uh, we're going to use logical read write data. We support that in our devices. So we'll set that to true. Okay. And this is the EtherCAT uh, subdevice controller chip. And this is just information read from the ESI file. And here's the slots I was talking about. These are the modules. So there's a module inside the ESI file configured for cyclic synchronous position mode. So we'll be using that one. And based on that module, it knows how to map the PDOs. So this is the first non-fixed RPDO. It's uh, empty by default, so there's nothing inside of it, so there's no need to map it. So I'll uncheck that box. We'll be using the fixed, the first fixed RPDO for CSP mode. Um, so I'm going to change this to uh, the control word. Target position. So these last two, velocity offset and torque offset. Um, so this is, these are the contents of this PDO. Uh, we're just linking them to uh, PLC variables for the TRIO controller. Um, 
since the trio controller doesn't define velocity offset or torque offset, it doesn't doesn't use those. Uh, we're just going to leave them as padding. Um, and likewise, we're we're not using this first non-fixed TPDO. Um, that looks good. Okay. These are the SDOs that the TRIO controller sends to do the PDO mapping and um, set uh, certain settings like the mode of operation. Okay, good. So that created the EC extend file for us. We'll go in here and um, look at this file. And I'm going to remove two SDOs here. This one, uh, object F030, that doesn't exist in the Copley servo drive, so we're going to get rid of it to avoid getting um, SDO abort errors uh, on network power up. Okay, let me save that. All right, everything else looks good. All right, next um, we will go to the here and we'll click configure. Uh, let me edit the MC config file. So on startup, if you don't set the um, network cycle time, the TRIO controller just goes with a default of one millisecond. Um, that's pretty common update rate for most uh, sub-devices. Uh, one millisecond's plenty fast enough. But, um, so if you leave this as not set, it'll default to a thousand microseconds. But you could, if you wanted to, um, for a you know, high-speed application, you could match the drive's position loop update rate, which is 250 microseconds. But we'll leave it at one millisecond for now. Um, and then this will we'll set to off. This is to automatically start up the EtherCAT protocol. Um, you know, so sometimes, uh, not the Copley drive, but some other drives, if you're using them, they, they require a delay. Um, so on startup, you might not want to initialize right away the EtherCAT network. So TRIO recommends to have that uh, off. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and create a motion perfect um, uh, program. So this will just be a CSP mode. Um, program. So this is Trio Basic, they're kind of structured text, um, edit, uh, their structured text uh, programs that they support. So this code I, I copied and pasted um, from our website. Uh, there's um, under support, general resources, app notes, there's a um, Trio Copley configuration guide. And this guide, there's a, a section that has a bunch of examples for Trio Basic. So I just copied and pasted it and put it in here. So um, the first line will, this EtherCAT00 will begin the, the network, will, will begin the scan of the network for the main device. It'll turn on the watchdog timer. So these are timers that ensure that we're updating the process data um, at the required rate. Uh, then we're, we're setting up user units. So when, I, when we say move one, we're really saying to move one rev, which is 131072 uh, 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 encoder counts. And then here we're setting up the uh, the speed, the acceleration, decelerate, deceleration for the uh, the moves that we'll be making. 
and we'll just be making um, moves of one rev, waiting for the move to finish. And then uh, we have a nice uh, 500 millisecond dwell time. So we'll just wait here for 500 milliseconds before starting the next one. Get a little bit of separation. Okay, um, so that's that. This uh, line here, trigger, that actually will trigger the uh, oscilloscope to run. So if I open up the, the scope um, at the same time as this program, I can trigger it from the program. So I turn on um, a channel. And uh, under, let's look at um, VP speed. Um, and we'll link it to axis zero. Okay. repeat trigger mode and um, program trigger and we'll set the uh, number of samples per division to 100 all right and we'll press play so let me oh, I have to reset the, uh, the controller because we changed some settings but um, let's do that Okay, so here we can see the um, the scope trace. Let me turn this to manual mode. Go up a bit so we can see the. So here's the um, profile velocity here, and we can see a nice trapezoidal profile. And um, yeah, we're able to make moves here and uh, trigger the scope, and um, this will just run continuously. So yeah, this is how you would get up and running in CSP mode using Motion Perfect. Um, so I uh, hope this was helpful. Please reach out with any questions.